Well, good evening, one and all. Thanks for joining us. I had to put a message on our Facebook thing just to say hi to everybody online. I don't know who's on there, but it says a couple people are watching, so that's good. Oh, I'm still warm from our nature hike. That was uh, a nice hike, and we had a competition. The smiles were all good. I just gave it to the youngest participant because the smiles were all. We had sticks to look like smiles, and uh, they were nice. We had a couple of rocks. One rock was picked as a winner and had a smiley face. I never really looked at the rest. So. Yes, uh, I'll make that admission now. Put you there. And that was good, but now I'm too warm. So it'll be okay. I'm glad you joined us. Nice to have you tonight. And uh, hope we can be a blessing to you. We're going to have a little bit of fun tonight. We're going to talk about joy, happiness, and all those good things. We're going to sing songs about joy and happiness. And uh, hopefully you'll be joyful and happy when we're done. I feel like I was going to say something important. <laughs> uh, whatever it is. Oh, I had a, that's what it was. I was trying to remember. I got, there's teen, I, I had some devotional booklets. There's one teen devotional booklet left, and there's one kid's one left. If you're interested in either of those, arm wrestle for whoever wants it. And uh, they're out on that table in the hallway. And if you need, want something, if you want one and you don't usually get one, let me know and I'll order more. I have to change the, the order soon to match what we need. So. If you need a want a devotional booklet, you let me know. I had to plug my phone in. My phone is dead, and now I got the cords, and I don't really need my phone here. I'll put that over here in case my friends start sending me texts in the middle of things and distracting me. Put that over there. Okay. Still very warm. Okay. Well, let's have a word of prayer, and then we'll sing together a little bit. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this beautiful day. We thank you for the nice sunshine and the warm temperatures. Thank you, Lord, that you loved us enough today to give us another day to serve you. And I pray that we have made use of this day to honor you. And I pray now as we spend these few moments together that you will encourage our hearts and help us tonight. And we give this time to you and uh, ask that you would meet with us and help us. And, uh, we pray all this now in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so our first song about joy and or happiness. I've got the joy, joy, joy down in my heart. And you got to yell where? Yell. <laughs> Yeah. 
and sing our chorus, I am so blessed. person was talking to somebody with kids help phone uh, that's the you know the phone number they have for kids to call if they're you know in trouble or being abused or need someone to talk to or all those things I never caught the numbers but uh, uh, it was right at the beginning of it just as I, I flicked on the radio so I never I never got all the details but they were making the point that over the last year or yes what year are we in 2021 right yeah. Over 2020, their call volume, and I don't know the numbers, but they were talking about how many more phone calls they received on the kids' help phone in 2020. And they, they were blaming it, of course, on the pandemic and the lockdown and all those things. And they were expecting even more this year. They had set up Facebook pages, and they've got a number for adults to call and, and all those things. And, you know, I, I thought to myself, if... All of these people that are having all these struggles, if they only understood how much God loved them and how they could get forgiveness of their sins and how they could have peace in their heart and how they don't have to live in fear because they know God is control, we wouldn't even need the kids' help phone. And there wouldn't be so much uncertainty, there wouldn't be so much uh, fear, there wouldn't be so much strife and turmoil and uh, people just, you know, not at peace. And uh, I thought tonight that we would try to lighten it up a little bit. And uh, if you can't laugh at yourself, call me. I'll do it for you. It's my new <laughs> motto. Trying to help everybody out. All right? Because you should be able to laugh at yourself because sometimes we do silly things. So. Proverbs 17, verse number 22, says, A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit drieth the bones. We're going to talk tonight about a merry heart. Now, I, I don't want you, I'm not trying to laugh at you, and I'm not trying to make light of anyone's pain. I'm not trying to make light of anyone that are honestly struggling. I, I've talked to people over the past week or so that have all kinds of struggles and my heart goes out to them and I wish I could fix all of their problems. Uh, you know, I wish I could give them the money they need and I wish I could give them the health they want and I wish, you know, I could fix their family issues. I, I really do wish 
that I could do that, and I can't. Uh, I can pray for people, and I can encourage people, and tonight I want it to be an encouragement to you that, uh, yes, there's going to be times of sorrow, there's going to be times of strife, and uh, it's not all sunshine and rainbows, uh, we're not always going to be happy, but we can always have joy, and happiness, they say, is a result of happenings, joy is a result of Jesus. But if you have Jesus in your life, you understand that all the happenings have been filtered through Jesus, and he's allowing it, and we can even have joy even in the midst of all the happenings, and we can allow that joy to spill out into happiness. So we're going to take some time tonight to have a little bit of fun, in fact, and uh, I hope that you will be helped as we uh, talk about uh, some things tonight from the Bible. A sandwich walked into a lawyer's office. And the lawyer says, sorry, we don't serve food here. <laughs> a doctor, someone went to the doctor and he said, doctor, I've broken my arm in several places, what should I do? And the doctor said, don't go to those places. <laughs> <laughs> I've been on a vegetarian diet and I've lost three days already. Mm -hmm. On my diet, I haven't been keeping track of my oh. diet. Yeah. Oh, what was the one? Oh, to the person who stole my antidepressants. I hope you're happy. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. I got that one today. I enjoyed it. So we're going to start out in Proverbs 17, verse 22, and talk about Mary Medicine. Let's pray together first. Lord, I thank you for this day again, and I thank you for the joy that we can have in you. Lord, we know if we've prayed and asked you to be our Savior, that we have eternal life, our eternity is settled, and we win in the end, and we've got an entire eternity to spend in a beautiful place called heaven, loving and serving you with the saints of all the ages. And when we get that perspective, we understand this earth is only temporary, and all the things that are in turmoil and all the fear and fright and sadness is but for a little while. It helps us have the right perspective. So Lord, help us to know your joy and to show your happiness. And we pray this now, that you would help us tonight to understand this. In Jesus' name, amen. Did you know there's a new type of broom out? It's sweeping the nation. <laughs> Discouragement. If you're discouraged tonight, that's often a predecessor or a, a lead up to depression. Depression is a big topic in our world today. Many people are dealing with depression and anxiety, and, I'll, and, the, and I'm not making light of that. They are real things, and I understand that. But I, I firmly believe that if we have our faith planted in the Lord Jesus Christ, we can better deal with these things. Not that they won't be any less real, but we can gain a proper perspective. And the Bible tells us in Proverbs 17, verse 22, that a merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit dryeth the bones. And I know, I know I've read stories over the years of people that are physically crippled because of bitterness they harbored in their heart. Their emotions affected them physically. Because they held on to anger and bitterness and all these bad thoughts towards someone. A broken spirit drieth the bones. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. And when we don't have Jesus in our life, if you have not prayed and asked the Lord to save you, to be your Savior, to forgive your sins, if you don't have Jesus, you don't have this medicine. You don't have what it takes to defeat discouragement or deal with depression or deal with the fear and the anxiety and all those things, you need to have Jesus. So, a merry medicine. A police officer caught two kids playing with fireworks and a car battery. He charged one and he let the other one off. <laughs> I'm reading a book on the history of glue. I can't put it down. <laughs> Did you hear about the kidnapping at school today? Hmm? It's okay, he woke up. <laughs> <laughs> Go to Proverbs, if you got your Bibles open, to 15. Proverbs chapter 15. 
What did the baby corn say to mama corn? Where's popcorn? <laughs> what do you call a cow with no legs? Ground beef. <laughs> what do you call a dog with no legs? Nothing. He can't come to you anyway. Proverbs 15, verse 13. A merry heart maketh a cheerful countenance, but by sorrow of the heart the spirit is broken. A merry heart maketh a cheerful countenance. If you know Jesus as your Savior, and you've had your sins forgiven, and you understand there's more to life than just surviving the day to make it to tomorrow, you have a merry heart, it does good like a medicine, and it gives you a cheerful countenance. A merry heart gives a cheerful countenance. Sorrow of the heart breaks the spirit. But a merry heart, because we're joyful in Jesus, gives a cheerful countenance. A duck walked into a pharmacy and said, give me some chapstick and put it on my bill. <laughs> Why did the scarecrow win an award? Because he was outstanding in his field. <laughs> Why did the girl smear peanut butter on the road? To go with the traffic jam. <laughs> <laughs> Proverbs 15, verse 15. All the days of the afflicted are evil, but he that is of a merry heart hath a continual feast. All the days of the afflicted are evil, but he that is of a merry heart, remember a merry heart is good like a medicine, a merry heart makes a cheerful countenance, and he that is of a merry heart hath a continual feast, so he has a satisfied soul. If we decide I'm putting my faith in Jesus and I'm going to trust him even in the midst of trying circumstance, he will give me joy and that joy will translate into happiness, it will do me good like a medicine, my countenance will be cheerful, my soul will be satisfied. Do you know why a chicken coop only has two doors? If it had four doors, it'd be a chicken sedan. <laughs> why do seagulls fly? Why don't seagulls fly over the bay? If they did, they'd be bagels. <laughs> yeah, everybody likes bagels, except seagulls turn into bagels. <laughs> two peanuts are walking down the street, but one was assaulted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is terrible. Any natural blondes? Oh. What do you do when a blonde throws a grenade at you? Pull the pin and throw it back. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I had to get in trouble, I stopped those. Yeah. <laughs> What's the difference between an African elephant and an Indian elephant? About 5,000 miles. <laughs> Nehemiah chapter 8. Now, take your time to find the book of Nehemiah. I'll tell you where it is as soon as I find it. Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms. So if you found Psalms, you've got to move towards the front of your Bible a little bit. It's a little short book. Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job. Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10. Now, the book of Nehemiah was written by Nehemiah while they were rebuilding the walls. They were living outdoors. They were working uh, under the conditions that... Uh, enemies were wanting to come to fight them and tear down the wall. They, in fact, it got so bad that they, they worked with a tool in one hand and a weapon in the other hand, just in case the enemy came. That's how close they were to war. Nehemiah, chapter number 8, verse number 10. Then he said unto them, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink the sweet, and send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. For this, is, for this day is holy unto our Lord, neither be ye sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. And in the Hebrew, it's spelled H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A. The joy of the Lord is your strength. <laughs> Nobody, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Nehemiah, in the, in the midst of all this, when they're, they're rebuilding the temple, they're going to move back to Jerusalem. He says, the joy of the Lord is your strength. So if we have the joy of the Lord, we have that salvation from Jesus, the only place we can get true joy, we have the merry heart that doeth good like a medicine, gives us a cheerful countenance and satisfies our soul, we also have our Savior's strength. How do we deal with the sorrow, the discouragement, the defeat, the depression that comes through different stages of life? 
Well, we know Jesus as our Savior, and we put our faith in Him, and we gain strength from our Savior, and He gives us joy. A soldier ran and said, General, General, the troops are revolting. The general said, well, you're pretty repulsive yourself. <laughs> I knew I shouldn't have eaten that seafood because now I'm feeling a little ill. <laughs> I love this one. What did the zero say to the eight? Nice belt. <laughs> I love it. It's great. Why are skeletons so calm? Because nothing gets under their skin. <laughs> Why do scuba divers fall backwards into the water? If they fell forwards, they'd still be in the boat. <laughs> yeah, that's true. They fall backwards. Uh, where are you supposed to go now? Isaiah chapter 12. Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah. If nothing else, you're going to learn where some of the books of the Bible are tonight. And you'll have some jokes to tell your friends tomorrow. Isaiah 12. I never said they'd be funny. I just said you'd have jokes to tell. Why does Superman get invited to dinners? Because he's a superhero. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Isaiah 12, verse 1. And in that day thou shalt say, O Lord, I will praise thee, though thou wast angry with me. Thine anger is turned away, and thou comfortest me. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also is become my salvation. Therefore, with joy shall ye draw water out of the wells of salvation. He says in verse 1, Thine anger is turned away, and thou comfortest me. And he says in verse 3, With joy you'll draw water out of the wells of salvation. If you've trusted Jesus as your Savior, and you know you're saved, you've got God's salvation, then you have a comfortable confidence. A comfortable confidence. Because we understand this world is not our home. We're just a passing through. Our treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. We know that we have an eternity in heaven with God, so we can put up with whatever we've got going on here. I remember Pastor Lechman came preach camp for us years ago, and he said something I've never forgotten. He said, on this earth, this is as bad as Christians will ever have it. Once we get to heaven, it's all good. But for people who don't know Jesus as Savior, on this earth is as good as it's ever going to get for them. And you think about some of the things in life we've got to put up with. If this is as good as it gets, it's not much to look forward to. But if we know Jesus as our Savior, then this is as bad as it's going to get because eternity is going to be wonderful. We have that comfortable confidence. Find chapter 35 in Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 35. Dad, I'm hungry. Hi, hungry. I'm dad. <laughs> That's a dad joke if ever there was one. Dad, did you get a haircut? No, I got them all cut. <laughs> Just about every time I get my haircut. Dad, can you put my shoes on? No, I don't think they'll fit me. <laughs> Dad, can I watch the TV? Yes, but don't turn it on. <laughs> Dad jokes. They're awesome. Isaiah 35. I guess I should have turned there. I'll just read it off here. Isaiah 35, verse 1. The wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them, and the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice even with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given unto you, unto it, sorry, the excellency of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord and the excellency of our God. Strengthen ye the weak hands and confirm the feeble knees. Say to them that are of a fearful heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, even God with a recompense, and he will come and save you. This verse tells us if we know Jesus as our Savior, in the wilderness, in a desert, and solitary place, we can still strengthen the weak hands and confirm the feeble knees. Now, we just talked about having a comfortable confidence. If I'm confident in my salvation in Jesus, I can be confident enough to confirm some courage in others. Strengthen the weak hands, confirm the feeble knees. We can encourage others. If we've got the joy of the Lord as our strength, we can use that, that confidence, 
to encourage others, to help others along the way. We don't make light of their pain. We don't say, oh, just you know, stiffen your upper lip and deal with it. That's But we can encourage them say, hey, God is the strength of my life. God is the one who helps me, and he can help you. We can have that con confirming courage. People say they pick their nose, but I feel like I was born with mine. <laughs> Want to hear a joke about paper? Oh, never mind. It's terrible. <laughs> terrible. Terrible. Did you hear about the new restaurant they got on the moon? Great food, but there's no atmosphere. <laughs> That's a science joke for all you science nerds. Please, uh, I'll call you later. Please don't do that. I've always asked you to call me dad. Or pastor, or whatever you call me. Just don't call me later. 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 16. We're almost to the end, so if you're not liking this, just hang on. We'll almost be done. We'll be back to our regularly scheduled program <laughs> next week. This is like an infomercial for joy and happiness. <laughs> is that a thing? It is now. It is now. 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 16. Everybody read that verse with me. Rejoice evermore. It's a daily decision. Rejoice evermore. It's a decision we have to make every day, no matter what our circumstances are, to say, if I know Jesus as my Savior, and I've got confidence that Jesus is helping me through this, it's a decision to be joyful. It's a decision to be happy. It's something I've decided to do each and every day. That's why this verse says, rejoice evermore. That means... To have an attitude of joy in God. I've seen people smile through tears. It's a sad time, but they've got their trust in God, and they're trusting God to get them through it, and it's joy in the midst of sorrow because it's a decision they made to rejoice evermore. Did you hear what the mountain climber called his son? Cliff. Did you hear about the guy who invented lifesavers? They say he made a mint. <laughs> I got so angry the other day, I couldn't find my stress ball. <laughs> Whenever the cashier at the grocery store asked me if I'd like my milk in a bag, I would say, no, just leave it in the carton. <laughs> How many apples grow on a tree? All of them. <laughs> How does a penguin build its house? He glues it together. <laughs> Dad, can you make me a sandwich? Poof, you're a sandwich. <laughs> I'm going to use that next time. 1 John 1. While you're finding that, I used to work in a shoe recycling shop. It was soul destroying. <laughs> What's the fastest liquid on earth? Milk. It's past your eyes before you even see it. How can you tell if an ant is a boy or a girl? They're all girls, otherwise they'd be uncles. <laughs> yeah. Okay. If there, I heard there was a new store called Moderation. They have everything. Everything in moderation. It's good. Did I ever tell you about the time I fell in love during a backflip? I was heels overhead. <laughs> Why do you never see elephants hiding in trees? Because they're so good at it. <laughs> Where did the one-legged waitress work? I hop. That's, <laughs> that's horrible. Oh, that's terrible. Who made that up? I shouldn't have read that. My friend asked me to help him with a math problem. I said, don't worry, this is a piece of cake. He said, no, it's a math problem. <laughs> did you find First John? I never... <laughs> I got it here. That which was from the beginning, verse 1, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled the word of the word of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father, and was manifested unto us, that we which we that which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father 
and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. That your joy may be full. You are joyfully joyful. It's not a forced or a faked happiness. You're honestly happy. And we've all seen people, and probably done it ourselves, put on the fake smile. You know, and just, oh, I'll just, I'll act happy. <laughs> but when we know, as verse 1 tells us, the word of life, Jesus Christ, so when you know that, and you've handled it, you've looked upon it, you've seen it, you've experienced it, your joy may be full. It's a joyful joy. Did you hear what happened when the two antennas got married? The ceremony was kind of boring, but the reception was great. <laughs> Without geometry, life is pointless. I gave away all my dead batteries today, free of charge. I needed a password, eight characters, and a capital, and a number long. So I picked Snow White, the Seven Dwarfs, Ottawa, and Seven. <laughs> I'm terrified of elevators. I'm going to start taking steps to avoid them. <laughs> well, what's the advantage of living in Switzerland? Well, the flags are being tossed. <laughs> Why did the octopus beat the shark in a fight? Because it was well armed. <laughs> Last, last verses, Galatians 5, turn there. While you're turning there, I'll tell you about the red ship and the blue ship that collided in the Caribbean Ocean. Apparently, the survivors are marooned. <laughs> red and blue, marooned. Okay. I have to explain it, it's not as funny. I deleted all the phone numbers in my phone that had Germans in it. Now it's Hans free. <laughs> <laughs> Last night, me and my friend watched three DVDs back to back. Luckily, I was the one facing the television. <laughs> That's awesome. How much does a hipster weigh on Instagram? <laughs> I like it. What do you call a group of killer whales playing instruments? An orchestra. <laughs> Why was the big cat disqualified from the race? Because it was a cheetah. No cheating allowed. Galatians 5, 22. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. When we know Jesus Christ as our Savior, we've got that heart that's been saved by Him. We've got that confidence we're, we've got his strength, we're satisfied, we're cheerful, we're joyful. It produces a pleasantness. It produces a pleasantness. If life is all that we have, then there's not much to get excited about. When you think of the suffering and the sorrow and the pain and illness and, and all the things that are going on, there's not much to produce joy. But if you know Jesus as your Savior, it produces a pleasantness because you know how it all ends. You know there's something to look forward to. You know, I would have loved to have sat around a meal with Jesus and his disciples. I think Jesus had a little bit of a sense of humor. Just some of the things that he said in scriptures were kind of a play on words. And, and if you can... I'd like to have seen how he said some of those things and some of the discussions he had with his disciples. I think uh, he had a good bit of fun. I mean, you consider, uh, you know, they were, he was a carpenter. Uh, some of them were fishermen, uh, just rough and ready, rough and tumble kind of guys, always probably ready for a good time. And uh, I think, and they knew joy. I mean, Jesus knew what it was to be joyful. And joy ought to be an evidence of the Spirit dwelling in us. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy. Joy will come out of a Christian who is filled with Jesus. I tried to buy some, went to buy some camouflage pants the other day, but I couldn't find any. 
An invisible man married an invisible woman, and the kids weren't nothing to look at either. <laughs> I went to a seafood exercise class, and I pulled a muscle. Did you hear about the guy who stole a calendar? He got 12 months. What did the ocean say to the shore? Nothing. It just waved. <laughs> I cut my finger chopping cheese, but I think I may have greater problems. <laughs> The man and his wife were lying in bed one night, and the neighbor's dog started barking. He was mad next door. He was barking like crazy. The man says, enough of this. Got out of bed and went outside. He had gone for a few minutes, came back, and his wife said, what'd you do? He said, well, I put the dog in our yard. See how he likes it. <laughs> you like your neighbor's dog barking online? No. So put the dog in your yard? Forget it. Produced pleasantness. Again, I'm not trying to make light of sorrow and pain, and I know there are people suffering. And I know all of you probably had times this week when you're like, oh, man. And I just, I want you to understand that if you know Jesus as your Savior, there is joy to be had. And he can help you even in the midst of those things. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. If you've got joy in Jesus, You'll have that cheerful countenance because your soul is satisfied. You've got your Savior's strength. You'll have a comfortable confidence. And you'll be able to encourage others because you've made a decision every day. I will be joyful on purpose. And it just produces a pleasantness in your life. Well, I hope that was a help to you. We're going to have a, a moment of prayer. We'll say goodbye to those online. And then we'll uh, mention a couple of prayer requests and pray about it tonight. Our Heavenly Father, I thank you for this opportunity to be in your house tonight, and I thank you for uh, the privilege of studying the scriptures, and I pray, Lord, tonight that uh, we have been helped through what we have learned in the scriptures about being joyful. And Lord, I pray that we let the joy of the Lord be our strength every day, and uh, not let Satan discourage and defeat us and get us down. And uh, Lord, I pray that tonight these few passages of scripture has helped someone in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thanks for tuning in. For those of you that are online, I hope that was a help to you.